Welcome to the ITU studio in Geneva, where we're very pleased to be joined today by Anne-Sophie Catre, who is the Executive Director for Consensus in France, and uh, very welcome to the studio. Thank you very much. Now, uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, La Consensus. You're a startup, you're involved in blockchain technologies, is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, okay. We're a global let's company and a global focusing on blockchain. Yeah. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's talk a little bit about blockchain technologies. How can blockchain technologies be used uh, for innovative payment systems in, in financial inclusion? Yeah, so um, I think it's quite interesting because uh, especially in emerging countries uh, where essentially uh, the technology may not be as mature maybe as in other countries, I mean, I think blockchain can definitely pl play a very important uh, and structural role actually for these types of uh, countries. Uh, there are many applications, but I think one which is quite interesting and maybe um, more important to start with is in terms of payments and cash token. I mean, we call it uh, also stable coin, you know, so there are different uh, uh, appellations. Uh, but I think it's quite interesting, especially, you know, with what's going on uh, with Libra and uh, what we're hearing about, uh, about stable coin. And there, there is really an opportunity actually for cash to be tokenized and to simplify actually the entire, I would say, value chain of payments in emerging countries. Maybe as an example, uh, there is a project actually which is called Eye2Eye uh, that we launched actually uh, early this year in the Philippines. And the idea is really to uh, facilitate uh, domestic payments within islands in the Philippines because it's important to know that in the Philippines actually uh, approximately 70% of the population actually is unbanked and people are essentially living in more than 7,000 islands. So there is very li little infrastructure and means of payment actually for people to transfer money from one island to uh, another and uh, many people actually live out of fishing and actually need you know to to be able to send money uh, to their family uh, across you know different islands so so one actually uh, solution that we put in place uh, with Union Bank was essentially to uh, facilitate this type of payment where cash is uh, simply deposited at a local branch and then is tokenized and what happens is that then the payments actually can be done almost real time within a few minutes and then the person uh, on, the, on the island can uh, can receive actually uh, the, the transfer and the money uh, actually in just a few minutes. So, so I think there are solutions uh, like this one that we'll most likely see uh, emerging in these countries which may replace also some mobile payment solution. So, uh, so I think it's quite interesting for emerging countries to look at these types of solution uh, to see how it, it, it will evolve. So that's interbank connectivity, is that right? Uh, or interbranch yes. connectivity? Interbranch, yes. yes. And it can become also interbank uh, connectivity. And uh, I think the roadmap is also to evolve towards uh, central bank digital currencies. But uh, I think it's important to start also with these types of, you know, simple within, uh, you know, closed ecosystem, you know, solutions and then slowly evolve, you know, towards uh, more open solutions. And let's talk about security and data privacy. I think they are going to be key to playing a, a role in winning consumer confidence and, and catalyzing the adoption of fintech for financial inclusion. Perhaps you could share your perspective on that mm. with us. Uh, yeah, I think, you know, when we uh, speak about uh, financial services, data privacy, of course, is one key, uh, one key element. Um, I think to me, it's going to be really important to understand the technology, you know, to really understand the technology, what it means to uh, create a private network on a blockchain, what it means to create a public network on a blockchain, and really get an understanding of uh, uh, where we stand in terms of governance, what are the best practices, and uh, how data can be protected, you know, in a way. So, so I think there are like um, uh, lots of uh, opportunities, but also maybe risk and, and, and threat, you know, to some degrees. And I think it's really a matter of kind of uh, getting to understand the uh, technology and being reassured that actually uh, there are solutions and there are, of course, privacy uh, solutions to, uh, to make sure that uh, uh, we don't breach, you know, any, uh, any regulations, of course. And that it's going to be con and conducted in a secure environment and one that uh, one's not going to lose uh, the, the, yeah. uh, the, the one's uh, financial investment in there. Uh, yeah, definitely. And I think also when we, especially when we start to talk about blockchain and digital cash on a blockchain, you know, what it means is that at the end of the day, this cash will benefit from the properties of the blockchain, you know, which are essentially uh, transparency, security, uh, as well as uh, the aspect where we can essentially, um, you know, use a smart contract to embed some uh, rules, some business logic, you know, behind that. So there is definitely 
there are definitely a lot of opportunities, but I think it's also important to understand you know, how smart contracts work and to make sure that uh, the right level of security and uh, audit and testing are embedded when these types of smart contracts are being implemented and throughout actually the life uh, cycle, I would say, of these types of financial instruments, uh, because yeah, there are kind of uh, implications, you know, which are uh, which are can be uh, can be quite uh, quite severe. So, uh, but there are definitely tools as well, uh, you know, like for instance mistakes or other types of tools, uh, where essentially developers can from the get go actually use these tools to ensure that whatever they are developing is not vulnerable uh, to external threats and uh, is actually uh, uh, secured, proof, you know, I may say, I may say. Now, we're here at the Security Clinic for, for Fiji, the Financial Inclusion Global mm -hmm. Initiative here. I wanted to ask you, what are the security challenges? I know you've touched upon this, but, but in a little bit more detail, concerning the use of blockchain technologies in the area of payments. Yeah. So I think, to me, you know, as I mentioned, the um, utilization of smart contracts and the understanding of how smart contracts work is key. I think when we speak about cyber security, it's not so different, you know, at the end of the day than any other application. Uh, but uh, from the moment we have a tokenized currency or a digital currency on a blockchain, we can associate a certain number of rules. And this is what's really specific actually to the blockchain and what needs actually uh, to be, uh, I would say, bulletproof. So um, like for instance, I was mentioning the project uh, I2I I just before. So uh, before it uh, went live, uh, actually uh, right now it's uh, in, uh, uh, in, in production or in an MVP mode, I would say, uh, the smart contract actually was audited by uh, actually our consensus diligence uh, arm. And I think it's really important to embed these types of best practice from the get-go so uh, we don't uh, run into uh, surprises uh, afterwards. Fair enough. Well, thank you very much for joining us here at uh, the Fiji Security Clinic and, of course, here in the, the, the studio today. And uh, we wish you the very best of luck with all the, pr the projects that you've, uh, you've got uh, happening now. And uh, hopefully we'll catch up with you again at some stage in the very near future. Okay, I hope so. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>